today. Thank you all for joining us today for this educational seminar, first of hopefully many coming from Atlanta Federation of Musicians. We are talking about the Music Performance Trust Fund today, which is a grant funding uh, organization that helps to fund grants for admission-free public performances around the United States and Canada. Uh, what I was hoping to do is go over our agenda a little bit today and let me share our screen um, so we can start jumping into things. Now, if anybody has a question or anything like that while we're going, feel free, you can either unmute and just ask or if you want to raise your hand, that's fine too. We can just stop. Um, but we did devote a little bit of time at the end as well for uh, Q&A. So I put this also in the chat, y'all, so you should be able to download these documents as we're going through. If I forgot something, just let me know. Um, so first off, what is the Music Performance Trust Fund? The Music Performance Trust Fund, like I had mentioned, is a grant uh, organization that helps to fund admission-free public performances around the country and also in Canada. We're going to be mainly talking about uh, performances that happen here in Georgia, but just so I'm aware, is there anybody that's from out of state? I see local 427721 on the call. Where, where are y'all from? If I may ask, if you could unmute. Yeah, we're from Tampa, Florida. Oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you. What's we're, your name? we're hoping to do something similar here. So I'm kind of just eavesdropping in to see how, how it goes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. What's your name? I'm Jeannie. Oh, Jeannie. Work in, the, yeah. work in the office. Yeah. Nice. We've got two genies on the call then. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, most of the things we're going to cover today are basically the same throughout the entire United States. In Canada, it works a little bit differently. So if you are calling in from Canada, um, just bear in mind, you'll want to get in touch with your local to ask questions. Um, but let's jump into things here and on the agenda. I've included a link which is a wonderful link and a wonderful resource to the Music Performance Trust Fund's website. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start with a brief video that they put together. Let me know if you can't hear it, okay? I'm gonna just try to play it right now. Do you like music? The Recording Industries Music Performance Trust Fund provides grants to pay professional musicians to play admission-free events for school programs, senior centers, and assisted living facilities, and at parks and public spaces throughout the United States and Canada. Our mission is to enrich the lives of the public, young and old, through music, and to contribute to the public's knowledge and appreciation for music. The MPTF has provided our resources to make music and communities large and small throughout North America for 75 years. Live music brings communities together. It expands learning in schools. It embraces the well being over our senior population. It champions diversity and interaction. Community events bring streets alive and stimulates local commerce. It creates interaction. It enhances our culture and traditions. The Recording Industries Music Performance Trust Fund provides the financial resources for members of the American Federation of Musicians to offer their services to their community. Each year, our goal is to provide funding for over 4,000 admission-free live music events. We will support over 500 Music in the Schools events, over 1,200 performances in senior centers and assisted living facilities, and over 2,000 concerts in parks and public spaces. We partner with business organizations, chambers of commerce, arts councils, municipal government organizations, and parks programs. We are funded by the major record companies, including Sony Music, Universal Music Group, the Warner Music Group, and Disney. 
asked the local union office of the American Federation of Musicians how to bring our resources to your community. How to open your car door while submerged underwater. <laughs> <Okay>. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening and checking that out. <laughs> Commercials. Um, well, so in, in short, you know, the Music Performance Trust Fund is this wonderful organization that helps put money in the pockets of musicians. And it's been set up by our grandparents and great grandparents. Uh, initially, um, there was a strike that happened, really the only strike in the history of uh, the entire United States recorded music that began in 1942 and ended in 1944. It was the longest strike ever known uh, ever to be in, in the uh, AFM uh, nationally. Um, this wonderful packet that they've put together um, is also included as part of that link. And we can kind of review just a little bit about the history here. And feel free if you want to read a little bit and save or bookmark this link for future reference. It's a wonderful document that celebrates their 75th anniversary. Um, last year was MPTF's 75th anniversary, and they began in 1948. Um, you can see here the timeline. Um, the resultant uh, of, a, of an agreement signed by 375 phonograph record and 70 electric transcription manufacturers founded the Recording Musicians Performance Trust Fund. And that happened, um, again, like I mentioned, with our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, depending on your age, um, coming together, standing in solidarity, having a community, and doing something together to make this happen. Um, if you read a little bit in, of this paragraph, um, where it begins, um, the music, the music performance trust fund was a, di a direct result of the strikes um, that AFM president James Petrillo led against the record companies in the 40s. The mission was to improve the lives of musicians who lost work due to advances in recording technologies during the 1920s and 1930s. It's kind of uh, maybe apropos uh, now that we see advances in AI and other similar streaming uh, platforms that have also robbed musicians of, of income. A hundred years later, here we are again. So the, the musicians who had once found regular work in motion picture theaters, radio networks have been displaced by these recordings. And we might feel that same thing today. Um, so fast forwarding, um, if you follow the timeline a bit, um, the MPTF, or some people call, refer them to as green sheet gigs. Uh, back in the day, there was a carbon copied uh, actual physical contract that you would fill out and the color was green. And essentially they were got to be known as green sheet gigs. Same, same idea here, the MPTF um, continued all the way um, helping to supplement musicians' income, um, primarily led by musicians and members of AFM, with typically a 50-50 split with a community sponsor, which basically means that a community sponsor would pay 50% of the engagement and the grant funded by MPTF would cover the other 50%. Throughout their history, they have had some different percentages. In fact, there was some hardship um, during the last credit crunch of 2007, 2008, and they were actually dipping all the way down to even 30% was the most they were willing to give. So community sponsors were doing 70% while MPTF was doing 30%. Fortunately, the uh, with the funding that's been provided by these record companies, uh, and the video referenced um, Disney, Sony, the Universal Music Group, Warner Music Group, 
um, they um, that funding has been replenished. And through the pandemic, we've seen the first historical 100% funding opportunities for the Music Performance Trust Fund grants. So it's exciting because a lot of folks can take advantage of not having to ask a restaurant or, or a church or a municipal government to cover half of the gig. The grant covers the whole thing. And that kind of leads us into our next um, section of today. Um, okay, I'm gonna exit here. And let me bring up, let's see where you are. Um, the parameters on which folks can apply for grant funding. Now, typically MPTF is made available to AFM members um, it's something that members of our local here in Atlanta, um, any member who wants to lead a gig, who wants to be a leader, can easily contact our office to learn more. And we're happy to always answer people's questions and even set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with, with folks. Um, today is a great way for us to all get together and ask more questions. And... Let me pause there. Are there any questions so far? Um, and Lisa, I am not sharing my screen. Good point. <laughs> Let me share my screen. I have a question, Aaron. Yeah. It's Penelope. It's Penelope. Yeah. Um, with regards to, and I see the notes indicating um, one of your documents it came from the podium in April, mm -hmm. uh, referencing, although it's 100% grants for specific programs, it's likely that the matching grant policy of 50% will be returning. Is that still the case? Yes, definitely. I, I had a meeting, and let me bring up that document too, if, if you all want to reference it. It's in the chat, but it's also here. I'll make it a little bigger here. Um, yeah, the MPTF historically for close to 65, almost 70 years, was a 50-50 split grant. So it, to it, a way to think about it is if you're already negotiating a grant or a concert, if you're, if you're working with a venue or an employer that is that you're hoping to have an engagement with as a musician, uh, you can use this grant opportunity to make two gigs. And what I mean is, if you're having one gig and they're paying for the whole thing, anyways, you could approach them and say, hey, well, let's do this gig and let's do another gig and you can pay the same amount and MPTF will actually cover 50% of both. So the amount you're paying is being spread even, even further, even longer. So it's just one way to think about it, um, especially like for me, I'm a jazz musician. I also do a lot of Oktoberfest gigs. I don't lead Oktoberfest gigs myself, but I love them. And we usually do a whole run of, you know, different gigs. But you look damn good in Lederhosen. I'm, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love, I love my Lederhosen. Um, but if you're doing, if you're doing a few gigs, for a specific kind of a uh, festival or, or time of year like that, and you're gonna be reaching out to a venue, it's a way to get more uh, more gigs, more work. Um, of course, the 100% funding still exists today, and we do have a particular allocation. Um, the One of the parameters of the grant uh, from MPTF is that they give an allocation of funding, which is taken from the recording companies and given to each local of AFM. Each local then is essentially charged with spreading the news, letting their membership know, and equitably uh, dispersing this funding, 
which you can see right here, our own local was given $47,137 to use. Of that funding, MPTF is asking for this year, we want to see 20% of this funding to be used in a 50-50 split. 80% of this funding you can still use as 100%. Because over the past two years, they were very, very generous. They were very liberal with their giving. And they were approving much more than our allocation. Two years ago, we almost earned as a local almost four times our allocation. Last year, um, the 23-24 cycle, I was almost three times the amount. So if, a, if there is a trend here, we're seeing that, yes, Penelope, excellent question, that they're coming back to the idea of a 50-50 split with a community sponsor. And we'll talk more about what community sponsors in just a little bit. Uh, hey, Ron, did you have a question? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and mute you then just so the feedback stops, okay? Okay. Thanks so much. Okay. So the other parameter that's really important is the first parameter is that the event has to be admission free. It can't be ticketed. Um, on the Music Performance Trust Fund web website as well, if you go to it, there's a tab. Um, am I still sharing my screen? Yes, I am. Um, thank you. And under the Get to Know Us tab, which you all can navigate to as well, you want to click on How to Apply, because this gives the specific parameters under which we as locals of AFM have to adhere, and only these parameters will be approved. Um, we've had some people ask us questions like, this is background music. Is it, and it's a free event, would it be approved? Is it, it's a private house party and it's background music. Is that, a, unfortunately not, because it's incidental, right? Um, if there's a political rally, that cannot be approved, right? Any function or a closed membership where they're not allowing people in. Um, if it's a part of a religious service, um, or part of a religious holiday, um, unless it's a specific kind of holiday like Labor Day, maybe some people have our, I don't know if that's a religion, I don't think it, maybe it's not a religion, but um, Labor Day would be considered a, a holiday, but if it's a religious holiday, unfortunately, it wouldn't be approved. Um, but feel free to review those on your own, and if you have specific questions, Ask your local, ask and get, just start the dialogue. That's how, that's how you get organized is by asking questions, calling your local, get to know who is running your office locally. And if they don't know, they'll figure out. And hopefully if they don't know, they'll say, Hey, I don't know. I'll figure this stuff out because there are some locals that frankly don't take advantage of MPTF funding, um, but they all do get allocations. Um, okay, so moving right along here, we have uh, a little bit of information in this wonderful brochure that I also included in the chat um, that's regarding our community sponsor. And a community sponsor can be any business entity with an EIN, an employee identification number. So examples of employee identification numbers are uh, businesses, small businesses, business organizations of any kind, shape or size, chambers of commerce, business organizations, like I mentioned, arts councils, uh, houses of worship, municipal government organizations, parks and recreation centers, um, and the list goes on. Um, part of the grant um, 
and part of being a community co-sponsor will kind of dictate how the funding works in terms of what arm or what program of grant funding kind of fits. In, I believe it's, yes. In this document that we had put together here locally at our local, which is like a checklist people can use, it lists in step one, the different kinds of programs that exist. So there are live community events. There are music education events in a school. Now we sometimes get the question, what about a school? Schools aren't open to the public usually, it's open, to the, open to students. That is a program within MPTF that would be approved because it's specifically called music in the schools or music education. And it could be at a library too. It could be really any time you're having an educationally forward event. Uh, Musician Fest, ooh, interesting. Musician Fest has a separate brochure and I would encourage you all to download it as well. For anybody who's a soloist, who works, um, whether maybe a singer songwriter, a solo harpist, or if you have a small group, uh, Musician Fest is set up in a way to bring music into retirement communities, senior centers, hospitals. Uh, we've seen some at memory care clinics here locally. And it's a great way to engage with our senior population. This is also not necessarily always open to the public. So it's kind of set up as a separate program from our community events. Um, but feel free, download this document. And in your negotiations or in your conversations, your dialogue with uh, potential community sponsors, uh, feel free to send this to them. These are all public documents. And we are, I personally, have, have, have on the mind that these are all open uh, programming. And the more people that know about it, the better. So last year, or actually it was two years ago, we saw the advent of live streaming concerts. That is another wing of programming, another arm of grant funding that we've seen quite a few people doing. And it does create a little bit more paperwork, I'll be honest. Um, but the cool thing about live streaming is that, especially if you're working with a community sponsor, um, like we had, um, we had a musician here locally, a local member, who had gotten uh, involved with the green, the big green egg, which is a local uh, grill manufacturing company. They make these beautiful big green grills. They look like eggs, and they did a streaming event that was multi It was uh, benefic beneficial to the musicians because they they got paid extra for the live stream. And it was beneficial to the band leader because their name was attached to the gig. But then it was also beneficial to the Big Green Egg because they could promote it on their channels as well. Um, other special programs that exist, uh, we do have listed um, on this other document, which was that page four of our April podium. Um, at the bottom, right-hand corner, there are typically, we've seen the past four or five years, um, even before my time in the office, um, special programs for Juneteenth. We did have a Juneteenth event happen. Black History Month, Jazz Appreciation Month, Women's History Month, which that should be listed there. I'm not sure why it's not listed there. Um, and other uh, programs that the Music Performance Trust Fund will sometimes announce later in the season. And to that note, the grant season 
starts May 1st and then ends on April 30th. So those are the dates uh, to consider when applying for the allocation uh, funding. And that funding is available first come, first serve. What we do here locally in Atlanta is we keep a spreadsheet of the date the band leader or community sponsor submits a proposal in full. And then also we keep note of when that concert is happening because technically the proposal has to be in and completed and submitted to MPTF one month before the engagement begins. So that's a parameter just to keep in mind while you're planning. Usually two months is a good plan of attack. Even more is fine too. So some people had already, we had one, uh, one uh, community sponsor submit something for Women's History Month already in 2025. It's moving right along here. If, are there any questions? Is a good place to pause? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Penelope, um, I will be requesting for also Women's History Month. And do I submit the proposal worksheet and the LS1 to you at the same time or? Excellent um, question. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> and do you prefer that it be typed? Should I go online to the PDF and just input directly or, or can I just, how do you prefer that to, to work? Yeah. So as, as Penelope is mentioning, if y'all are not familiar, um, one of the contracts that exists with, with the American Federation of Musicians across the USA, so it's different in Canada, but in USA, the LS1 is a pension remit remittance form and contract that we use whenever a union engagement occurs. Technically, the LS1 is required for any engagement that happens. However, to answer your question, Penelope, the document itself is not required for the proposal. So to expedite things, what you can do is wait to fill out the LS1 until you get closer to the engagement, until the roster is confirmed. So rather than having to fill it out twice, like some people will submit a hand filled out version of just the instruments. But unfortunately, the pension fund cannot process the pension with just instrument listed. It has to be people. It has to be individual humans listed um, with the specific amounts that are being paid. So really good question. Um, of course, we're happy to work with any anyone who's a new who's new to leading. Or if you're not new to leading, that's fine too. We'll work with anyone, time allowing, to help fill out this paperwork and to make sure that the numbers are accurate and to transmit it, which we do weekly on Fridays, to the pension fund after the engagement is done. Now, that being said, it's kind of an uh, important thing to note. The MPTF engagements typically take about a month afterwards to pay. What happens is the, the MPTF pays the community sponsor, and then the community sponsor pays the musicians, pays the pension, and pays the work dues which in the USA is a 5% work due flat rate for all locals. The um, If it wasn't an MPTF engagement, um, like let's say it's a Johns Creek Symphony Orchestra concert, those, um, those are all union engagements and they pay a 3% work due, which is taken out. Um, so the musician doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, 
Similarly, for these engagements, the community sponsor would take that money and cut a check to the local. And part of that money is also uh, basically to help with the logistics and the facilitation of these grants. Essentially keeping our lights on, keeping the phones on, keeping my this position that I currently chair uh, filled. Uh, so really good question. Anything else? Is there any other questions while we're paused here? In relation to that, uh, the, the term community sponsor, mm -hmm. would that be considered myself as a sole proprietorship or an, a non, if I become a nonprofit? Yeah. Here, let me stop the share so we can kind of go into the Q&A. Absolutely. Yes, your own, if you have a sole proprietorship, if you have your own business, if you're a small business owner, your business can be the community sponsor. Um, we've seen that multiple times with individuals that have their own chamber group or individuals that have their own LLC. That is totally doable as long as, as a community sponsor, you are aware that the tax liability rests on your shoulders. So you will be cutting a uh, 1099 uh, at the end of the year um, to these musicians that you're hiring through your business, just like for any other gig. Um, exactly. Yeah. Like we do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I play with a gypsy jazz quartet um, and the leader frequently, you know, we're, we're getting a 1099 every year from them. You know, that's just the way it works. Um, did Jake, Jacob, did you have a question? Here, I can ask you to unmute. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Feel free to ask, Jacob. Yes, I was a little bit unclear when you gave those, uh, the grant season. You said 4-1 to 531. Is that in a calendar year or a fiscal type year? It's specific to... And to, to clarify, it's May 1st through April 30th. Ah. And it's specific to MPTF grants only. So you can kind of think of it like a fiscal year entity okay. or calendar. Um, but that's the that's the other parameter that we're working under is that we are allocated as a local that funding. It's announced in March, usually mid-March, and we print it in April's podium every year, what it is, the amount, and what new protocols there may be, because every every season, there might be something new, or there might be something changing. And so whatever we're communicated by the MPTF is going to be communicated to our membership in podium. So... Like Jacob, Jacob Herzog, wonderful accordionist in town. He gets a print copy of Podium. If anybody wants a print copy and you want to get it mailed to you, just let us know. We're happy to include you in the mailing. So you get one mailed right to you. Um, let's see. So let's move on here. Or Jacob, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, great. Wonderful. Is there any other questions while we're? Hey, Aaron, this is Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, I don't know if you can answer this, but knowing that it starts May 1st, is there typically a rush of applications and is there any backlog? Is there any mm. sense of urgency? Like, is it now too late, do you think, um, to plan for something due to it opening up in May? Um, or is it a rolling system that you don't, really see that being a uh, an issue if i were to say plan now for an event in the fall oh that's a great question let me share my screen again and i'll show you how exactly we keep track right. here locally um i think this is the document here so 
I just okay. started a, a spreadsheet. Um, and what we do is we keep track down here with proposal inquiries. So you can see all the folks that have submitted inquiries down here, right. which is dated on the date of completion or the date of progress. And then the in the notes, I, I include the date of the concert. So as soon as somebody inquires, I put them on this list. Okay. As soon as the application is done and it's been submitted to us, and then we submit it to MPTF, it goes up here. Okay. It's up here. So these are the applications we've submitted so far. Uh, of 47.137, we have, um, well, we'd have to calculate the others down here, but um, we still have funding. We still have funding. Okay. Absolutely. So, but that being said, it is first come, first serve. So, yes, we right. get a rush in May. It does come at a rush. And people will plan things out far in advance sometimes. Um, yeah. Six months, nine months in advance. That's totally fine. Um, and honestly, I'd pre we'd prefer it to be that way so that sure. we don't have too many surprises. Right. But at that point of the submission, that's when you need all the instrumentation, all the humans, all the members, all the musicians at that point of submission. The the roster itself, it doesn't have to be a completed roster of names. Okay. But okay. you want to know for costing, because we're yeah. dealing with and let me bring up the costing sheet real quick. Um here, one second. I think I have it here. So here's a costing sheet, which by the way, all these documents here in Atlanta, we keep in our membership portal and people can go and download them at any time. Right. Of course, if you want, if you have trouble accessing that for whatever reason, just give us a call. I can just email them to you as well. That's no problem. Okay. Um, but it's important, it's important to know the instrumentation uh, for costing, not only the, the details of the engagement, you know, how long the rehearsal is. Uh, and MPTF, by the way, only covers the cost of one rehearsal, FYI. So if there's going to be multiple rehearsals, the community sponsor would have to cover the costs of those. Is there a time limit on that rehearsal? Um, no, there's not. Okay. No, but it would be costed out based on our local bylaws, which, right. um, I can also pull up a copy. Our local bylaws here, for anybody who is not aware, if you want to find the costing, it's in article 16, is our cost, our, um, Price list. And for every local of AFM, these are going to be different numbers, right? So if you're in Tampa, Florida, or if you're in Seattle, or if you're in New Hampshire, you have to reach out to your local if you don't know what these numbers are, right? So for us here in Atlanta, if you have a copy of the bylaws, which I'll put I'll put a copy in the chat too here in a second. Um there are rates right here in Article 16, starting on page 25. We also have a scale summary uh, on our website. And we've put the numbers right in the spreadsheet. So for rehearsal, you'll know it's 76 an hour. There is a two hour minimum with our local. So if it's a less than two hour rehearsal or a less than two hour performance, you're still getting 86 times two or 76 times two. Um, bear in mind on January 1st as well, our local voted to increase our, our scale wages. So these numbers will change on January 1st. And if you have questions, just let it, just give us a call too. That's always okay to give us a call. 
So again, just to be clear on the um, not doubling on the uh, initial uh, document, I just submit the proposal worksheet to be in the added to the queue. Yes. Yeah, that. the documents that are required technically for the proposal submission are here in step two. The MPTF grant proposal worksheet. The, the MPTF AM breakdown sheet, which is that spreadsheet we just went over. The terms and conditions page, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. If it's a streaming event, then there's a separate streaming agreement that needs to be signed by the community sponsor. And then the LS1 is just to be aware of. We do have it on the checklist. Um, and some people prefer to be really thorough. And so they'll fill that out with just the instruments. That's totally fine. If it was my wife, that's what she would do. She's extremely thorough. <laughs> if it was me, I might call my call the local and say, hey, do I have to do this right now? I'm kind of running, running behind because <laughs> that's usually how I roll. Um, but I'm trying to get better at that. Um, so let's go over these documents really quick. Um, the proposal worksheet, there are two kinds of proposal worksheets. And actually, let's let's go to the portal so you all can see where those live. If you're a member of our local, you would log into the member section of the portal. You would click on contracts, and then you would come to MPTF over here on the left-hand side. And on under the MPTF page, the the there are two worksheets. Uh, there's one for streaming. Let's look at that one. In this section, what you would want to do is first I would download it. If it was me, I would first download this document and then fill it out separately with my PDF viewer. Because there is, there's the chance that if you start filling this out online, if you don't save it appropriately, you can lose all of your work. So that's just me having made that mistake in the past. Um, I always learn best from my mistakes. Uh, but we would put in the name of the act. Um, it's the Atlanta um, Fusion Band. Then there's six people plus a streaming tech because the streaming engagement does pay for a streaming technician to be there the day of, of the concert. So that'd be seven. The leader name is um, John Doe, et cetera, et cetera. These are just examples. Tech support is Jane Doe. Community sponsor name, the Atlanta Fusion Band has an LLC, so they can be their own community sponsor, as an example. But it could also be the um, the Arts Council of Alpharetta, let's say. They could be the community sponsor as well. Um, and then here, what you can do is list the times, and it does indicate several times, but honestly, if you already have the date lined up, just list that date. That's totally fine. And what I encourage people to do is list um, both the date of the performance and the rehearsal here to help out with, um, because when, we're, when we as the local office to help facilitate this, we're taking all this information, we're literally taking it and copying and pasting it into an online grant management portal that MPTF has. So we need to know um, all these details, again, that are listed on the, the checklist, um, which is in step two. Uh, so, okay, let's see if I come back here. Oops. 
Important to note here in the description of the one hour performance, they do ask for an estimate of audience attendees. Now, even if you're only expecting 10 people, that's okay. That's not going to inhibit them either approving or not approving an engagement. The audience count is merely to keep track of how many eyes, how many people are getting to see a free concert. And I, we usually do a range to start. And in fact, the, the grant uh, portal asks for a range as well. So it might say, I might say as a description, 10 to 25, uh, well, let's say 10 to 75 audience members will enjoy a free concert in the community surrounding Alpharetta, Georgia. The music performed will be uh, selections from Return to Forever, The Headhunters, and these are just jazz fusion bands that I know. Maybe you don't know them, that's totally fine. But these are just an example of what, again, this makes, <laughs> made a band uh, would be listing. Um, and then I might do one, one more sentence. Um, uh, in addition, the venue um, in Alpharetta will be providing food trucks, food truck vendors for folks who come hungry. And this is another question we get asked quite often is, are there other vending opportunities while at an event? And if we refer back to the website, there's no indication here that vending of external goods, like if there's food being sold by a food truck, um, that regularly happens. And the more people you can get involved in that way, like if you know somebody who's a caterer, somebody who wants to come and sell cupcakes, or we've had, we had one, uh, one ensemble leader ask about donations for an educational event. Um, that one we had to ask MPTF directly because I didn't, I didn't have an answer for them. Um, but they said, if you're donating to a good educational cause for ed for music in music education, and you're going to ask, that's totally fine. Um, but I again, I would I would err on the on um, asking first, um, just so that if something were to come up, that you're actually starting the dialogue with your local, and they can if they don't know, they're going to ask the MPTF directly. Um, okay, so really good question, Kevin. That's kind of a long tangent, but um, we're kind of now into how do musicians and community sponsors access funding. Um, we fill out these documents. Um, these, these one, two, three, four documents. Uh, oh, let me show you the terms and conditions. That's, that'd be a good good thing to see. Terms and conditions. Oh, that's also on the, maybe we should just keep with our portal here. And terms and conditions. There we are. The terms and conditions is a page that the community sponsor signs. And essentially, it's saying that the community is the community sponsor is agreeing to accept this money and be prepared with the tax liability to pay the musicians to pay pension and pay work dues there's a few other things that the terms and conditions page does list and if you have any questions or if or if the community sponsor has questions we have set up 
here at our local individual Zoom meetings with the band leader and the community sponsor so that we can address any questions that might come up. So the community sponsor signs down here and next up would be, let's take a look here. If it is a streaming event, there's a streaming agreement that the community sponsor would also be signing. And if, by the way, here locally, we do use e-signature, uh, an e-signature process. We're happy to iterate e-signature parties if that helps to expedite things. Just let us know. Uh, the one thing with streaming and to be aware of, MPTF, because it's an admission-free concert, it doesn't explicitly allow for recording and capturing of performances, obviously to be resold or somehow repurposed for monetary purposes. Um, that being said, if the community sponsor wants to record or if the leader wants to record, they can negotiate with the community sponsor to have a separate AFM contract for recording. But that portion would not be funded by MPTF. And we've had that asked before. In my time, I haven't seen it happen because it kind of goes against the spirit, frankly, of this whole uh, grant um, since it was born out of a strike for recorded music. It's, it's to be there in person, to be present, enjoying the music together with your community. That's the whole purpose of this grant. So uh, you would suggest perhaps it's not a tool for <clears throat> um, a demo, video demo recordings? No, no. In fact, if we go back to, uh, let's see, where did I put that? I mean that would be look that would be frowned upon. It wouldn't be, yeah. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. And you prefer because you and I've worked together before that we come directly to you. That we don't take any of our questions to New York. We just simply we process through you. And uh, if, even though it's New York documents, but we continue to come to you directly <clears throat> for support. Yeah, and the Music Performance Trust Fund is a separate entity from AFM. They have a small staff. Um, if we go back to that 75th anniversary document, you can actually get to know their team in the back. Um, Dan Beck, he's the MPTF trustee currently. Then the admin, the folks that help to manage these grants, Vidri is wonderful. She's been there many decades. She's awesome. Samantha as well, she's been there a long time. She's fantastic. Um, Alburn, I have not met, but he's the CFO and he's more behind the scenes. And then Natalyn, uh, Natalyn Hepburn, BD, she's um, also wonderful. She helps with all the streaming events. She does um, their social media. She helps with all of their marketing. And she's usually the first person that helps to answer questions. So, we typically, because they're only a small team, right? There are one, two, three, four, five people, and they have to field applications and proposals from every single local of AFM in the Amer in America, in the Americas, and USA and Canada. They just prefer that you started here locally. Of course, if there's something you that we can't answer, hi. <laughs> if there's something we cannot answer. We will gladly, here, I'll move this over too so you can see, people can see. Um, we will gladly reach out to them directly. Now in, a, in a, an emergency kind of situation, if, if you're at a different local and your local, there are plenty of locals in America that don't have office hours. Um, we are fortunate here in Atlanta, we actually have a staff. We have myself, 
the team is myself and Bill Johnston, our secretary treasurer, who the membership voted in. Uh, and he began on, technically his term began on January 1st. Um, although he's technically started a few months before that. Um, the, the team here, we will field as many questions as we can. And we're here um, because our membership, essentially your the dues that you pay help to fund our positions and they help to keep our local office and hall operational. Um, so if you don't, if you're calling, if you're calling in from a, from a smaller community and you don't even know who your local is, you can give us a call. That's fine. We have a book um, of locals from around the, the country and we'll help to pinpoint who your people would be in your in your area. So does that answer your question, Penelope? Sure, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so um, this comes up to um, finding a venue, finding a host, um, and accessing these funds. First, with accessing the funds, like we've been talking about, you you fill out all the paperwork. You start the conversation, the dialogue initially first with, uh, hopefully first with your community sponsor. And once we have locally all the paperwork, which we can help you fill out as well, then we submit it to MPTF. MPTF usually takes two weeks, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, to give us the approvals. The approval comes in the form of a letter that we send to the community sponsor and the leader of the engagement so that you know, hey, this is, it's been approved. This is the funding amount that is gonna be given, et cetera. Um, then we get to the date of the engagement. The engagement happens. You do your rehearsal if you have one. You do the gig itself. After the gig, it's important to get in touch with your local who will help to fill out what's called an affidavit of completion, which is a, a small landing page on the, it's a document that's attached to a landing page of the grant portal by MPTF that's showcasing that the event has been completed successfully. So we ask for band leaders to please send photos so that we can guarantee the, or, or see that this actually happened. Um, it's like, if I can't be there, I, I like to go to these events when I can, um, but I'm also a working musician and I sometimes have my own gigs and they might conflict, et cetera. But um, sending a photo or two, great way for us to also publicize these events happened in our own monthly newsletter and MPTF publishes photos as well. In fact, we have an Atlanta, where is that Atlanta photo? Is it in here? Um, hmm. Let's see what page that's in. We had, we had an event two summers ago for Labor Day. Um, here, let me share the screen again. And you can see right up here in the top left corner, if you, know, if you don't know, that's Trey Wright and Kelvin Thompson. And that's the MPTF banner. They did an, they did an engagement in Alpharetta together with two bands. Um, KT was the leader and it was a wonderful event. Um, lots of people came out. Um, it was part of a pre-existing concert series that happens up there as part of Arts Alpharetta, um, or I believe it's the Arts Council in Alpharetta. And the photos are, are just a wonderful way to let people know what's going on. Um, and that being said, when finding, when reaching out and finding a venue, finding a host, I would start with your community. 
you know, and maybe I could pass this around the room. Do you all have any ideas of who a host, who a community sponsor could be? Anybody want to jump in there? Talking about in the Atlanta area? Yeah, for us here just locally in Atlanta. Yeah. Who do you yeah, think? I mean, I've, I've, I've sort of got my eye on some of these uh, just community festivals that happen in in-town neighborhoods in the fall, as well as some of the porch fest types of mm -hmm. events that um, are free and open to the public, but take place on uh, community homes in different communities. I know there's one in my community in Oakhurst and Decatur, but also Virginia Highlands. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just, you know, it seems as... Um, the Beltline and other projects continue to grow and flourish that there are more performance or semi-performance appearing um, areas that appear uh, and community events. So that's sort of what I've got my eye on to see what might fit for some things I do. Yeah, the Porch Fest, that's really an interesting one, Kevin. Yeah. Do they have their own... Um, business entity or yeah um the one i'm familiar with yeah it's, it's essentially a non-profit but there's really no transactions made it's really a um the guy that organizes the one in oakhurst uh he's a city planner and so uh architect kind of guy um and he just he serves as a liaison between the um artists and the people with porches that want to host uh through a website and uh, it's pretty much all volunteer. Cool. So, but yeah, there's others. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Yes, Katie. I just had a, a clarification, um, kind of tacking on with what you were saying, Kevin. Um, in that case, the the guy that you were mentioning, would he be the community sponsor? Who who would be the community sponsor in this like porch fest? Because the, they're they're really cool. That's a great it idea. Could be. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. Yeah, I can. I've been meaning to ask him um, myself. I've known him for a while. Um, Scott Doyne is his name, but there's other porch fest. And other, you know, it's, it's sort of an idea that has taken over a few neighborhoods in the metro Atlanta area, probably outside too. Um, I did have a question actually, kind of related to that. In that event where there's lots of things going on, and most bands are volunteer or um, amateur groups, if that's um, something that's seen as a positive or a negative or is it no issue if a um mptf sponsored group or artist or band or orchestra uh performed in that in the context of that kind of um festival i i don't see why not i mean again <laughs> if there are questions like that it's always best to to ask yeah okay as an example the the mptf has other partnerships one of them being make music day or the make music day alliance which is a, a worldwide right, yeah. festival that happens on the summer solstice we actually had four events take place here at our local office last friday on june 21st we had almost 80 people come. Um, the Make Music Alliance was the community sponsor. And Music Performance Trust Fund funded the leaders and two side musicians for these engagements. So it paid for three, three people, essentially, per project to, to make it happen. So in that instance, there were people playing that, and that's the spirit of Make Music Day, is that anybody can come and make music together. It's the celebration of making music together. So, and to double back on Katie's question, um, in that instance, Make Music Day was the community sponsor. But for, let's say if Porch Fest, you got involved with somehow, they could be the community sponsor or another example or another community sponsor in that example or in that equation could be uh, an ensemble that has its own EIN. 
Or it could be you have the conversation with Porchfest as kind of like the host of the gig. And then you reach out to the local chamber of commerce in that area. And you bring them in and you say, hey, Porchfest is happening. We have this great opportunity to have um, professional musicians paid with a grant. Is there any funding in your um, events budget for to, to host a special one-off porch fest at your location? I mean, I'm just, I'm brainstorming, you know? And then that gets more entities involved. Of course, it's more more work. It's more moving parts, but um, it's cool to have more more people in my mind because then those relationships you establish over time, every year it becomes a regular gig, and then you reach out the next year and say, "Hey, we're doing Porch Fest again. Can you help sponsor it again this year?" And then they become ingrained and our local benefits, the musicians of our local benefit and our allocation grows every year. I've seen just from the own, the, the numbers of our own local, I've seen our, our allocation grow every year. The more events we do, the more MPTF says, oh, you're being more active. You're getting more gigs, more funding. Here's more money. So Ideally, that's what we want. We want to see more money coming in. Um, Katie, does that help to answer your question? More or less? I hope so. Um, well, we, we basically covered, we covered the venue, um, cover, finding a host, finding a community sponsor, um, we talked a little bit about filling out the LS1. We we covered the checklist. And I guess at this point, are there any other questions that, here, let me stop sharing. Are there any other questions that we can help answer that maybe they could even be rhetorical questions that um, we don't have a, an immediate answer for? The uh, question I forgot to ask. Oh, good. What's that? What's that? Um, all right, I'll, I'll go real quick. Um, is there, and I'm sorry if this is covered and I missed it, but um, any production needs, like audio production, whether it's someone to help set up microphones or um, uh, anything outside of musicians, is any of that? Uh, is a way to have any of those expenses covered? Great question. Uh, technically, no. Okay. <laughs> the grant yeah. is specifically for musicians okay. of the AFM um, and members to to benefit here locally. Um, but if it's a streaming engagement, there is a portion of the grant funding that will cover the streaming technician. But okay. to be clear, they are paid like a musician. They are paid the same rate as the musician for the performance. And that person may be helping set up mics. They might be helping set up the streaming. Um, but let's say to hire a, a, a sound engineer. Specifically, unfortunately, this is only funding for for musicians. Okay. And the way we uh, we administer and, and interpret that here locally is we encourage people to be members of AFM of our local, and we want. Um, if they're a streaming technician and they're not a member, then it's a way to start that conversation and say, why does this exist in the first place? Um, maybe consider joining and apply for your own funding. All right. Yeah. 
All righty. Ron, did you have a question too? Um, I'm asking you to unmute. Uh, there you go. Okay. How about now? It's breaking up just a little bit, Ron. Can you ask it again? I just want to know a little bit more about musician fest. Okay. If I'm understanding correctly, Ron, you're wondering about musician fest. Give me a thumbs up if that's the case. Okay, sorry, it's it was just creating a lot of feedback. And that, that usually happens if you're not wearing headphones on the call. Um yeah, let me bring up that 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 musician fest brochure one more time. Um musician fest is a way for musicians to get involved and perform, usually soloists. Musician Fest was really set up for solo musicians, singer-songwriters, maybe a harpist, maybe you play accordion, and you want to play as a soloist. You can strike up a conversation with a senior center, a hospital, memory care clinic, um, a nursing home, a hospice center, anything like that um, to essentially have a solo engagement. Now, if there are others that you wanna play with, let's say you have a duet or you have a trio and you wanted to have the duet play, that requires just a special approval from MPTF but they generally will approve that as long as we ask ahead of time. So we just wanna make sure that if it's more than just a soloist for Musician Fest, that we know how many people are involved. And of course we would know that anyways, cause we would cost it out. Um, Musician Fest can pay a, a flat rate of $200 for a one hour performance. And that's how we handle it here at our local. But there's the, another option that local to local, this might be different, that the local bylaws and price list would apply for Musician Fest. So you'd want to get in touch with your local to see what parameters they have set up for their Musician Fest engagements. Does that answer your question, Ron? You can feel free to chat or I can unmute you again. Um, I asked you to unmute if, did you have any other questions, Ron? Uh, one, one more question. Do you need a commercial sponsor for a flat $200 solo performance? Yes, and I, I'm sorry if I'm not completely understanding, but I think what I under, what I what I heard was do you do musician fest engagements require a community sponsor and yes they do. So in that in that regard you could it could be your own business entity if you have an LLC or a sole proprietorship it could be that particular space as well. We here locally we've seen several we've seen several done at um Smyrna Me Memory Care, it's a memory clinic. We've seen several at Sunrise uh, Senior Centers. There's several in Atlanta. I think it's a nationwide um, retirement community. And we've seen one in Decatur, several at in Decatur at a place called Oak. Um, I think it's Oak, Claremont Oaks, Claremont Oaks in Decatur. Um, but hopefully that answers your question and feel free if you wanted to call after the afterwards, or if you have some other questions, you can email us. You can give me a call directly. If you're not from Atlanta, please start with your own local <laughs> and make sure you're having the conversation with your local first. Um, 
if you need help, you can always go to AFM.org to figure out who that is, and they can help you uh, answer further questions. Yes, Katie. Okay, so I'm slightly embarrassed because uh, I feel like this is maybe a little bit of a user error thing, but I've been trying for the last like 15 minutes to pull up what you did when you pulled up the proposal form. I can't find it anywhere. So I went oh. to the to the website, right? Our Atlanta Musicians website and and clicked on MPTF. But all okay. I'm seeing there is a is a learn more link that takes us to the so it, could you just go through that again? Like, how did you access that proposal form? Where is yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll put it in the chat, but for others Thank that you. are maybe watching this after after the fact, what you want to do is, so we here locally, and this is different from local to local, but we have a public facing website, which is atlantamusicians.com. That's for any person on the internet to read more about. But members, since this is a grant specifically for members, mm -hmm. you'll have to log in to the membership portal. So Katie, to do that. I did that. Okay, that would be great. <laughs> and I still couldn't find it. <laughs> so once you log in, here, I'll, I'll even log in with my own credentials. See if I remember. My it might be helpful. Could you share your screen again? Is that possible? Yep. That is very, thank you for reminding me. Forgot. So here's that screen. I'm going to just type in my own credentials here. It may be very well that I'm not doing it on a computer. It could have been some issue with me trying to do it on my phone. So thank ah, you for- It is different on a phone, on a mobile yeah. device. Um, so you Yeah, want, okay, I saw this. You wanna go this to contracts. Different. Okay. And then you wanna go to MPTF. I see, that on side phone, was not available for me. Uh, from your device, yeah. you have to go all the way to the bottom. To, oh, and there, I thought I did, okay. Do you have your phone in front of you? So if you're logged into the portal and you click on contracts, you're gonna to wanna to go all the way to the bottom and there's a little tab, a little arrow. You see that little arrow? I'm going to contracts right now, contracts, and then at the bottom, it's not, it's not letting me scroll. All I see is the, um, hmm. yeah, it just says, welcome to contracts. It, it lists anything, it won't let me go up, down, or to the bottom. It, that's all that's on that page. So I, I think okay. that's the issue. Um, I well, would, if I was on my computer, I think it would be like a, like you're showing us now. Yeah. But that explains why. Katie, I'll give you a call okay. after we're done. If you have, okay. you have a minute and, and I'll help you out. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I don't want to take up any more of the meeting time, but I, I'm glad that I asked because I was really starting to wonder, like, can I find this? Yeah. Yeah, from, you know, we're not, to be honest, we we are a, a labor organization with limited funds, so our portal is not perfect. It's total um, okay. Thank and, you. Yeah, but we we appreciate it very much. Um, and we'll uh, I'll give you a call after. Perfect. Thank you. Um, appreciate it. Yeah. Were there any other questions that Jeannie? Yes. I'm just curious if uh, Atlanta Local has any restrictions on the makeup of the group, like what percentage of the group needs to be union members? And the other question is, what do you do when a group is hiring musicians from a different jurisdiction to come into your jurisdiction to mm. play rather than hiring your own musicians? Mm -hmm. It's a very good question. We um, we strongly encourage all musicians to be members. Um, that being said, in the state we live in, um, as a right to work state, there are rules and regulations surrounding that that specifically not to go into the the weeds with with um, the law, but we can't force anyone to be a member. Um, we can't, you know, but with MPTF, what we, what we want is for people to understand and to educate themselves on why these funds, why these funds exist in the first place. They exist because our grandparents 
and great grandparents negotiated this. They were AFM members themselves. And with the guidance of President Petrillo in the, in the in 1940, every musician of America that was a recording musician, every recording musician in 1942 went on a two-year strike. Um, I'm a jazz musician. I study and I'm a saxophonist. I studied a lot of Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker, there are no recordings. There are no uh, label recordings. There's some bootlegs now that have been re-released, but there are no recordings of Charlie Parker between 1942 and 1944. I mean, for, for a dude who died very young, it's a very substantial thing. And I remember learning about that in school. I didn't know really what it was or what the ramifications were, but now that I work at the local and I see these various funds that have been set up, Music Performance Trust Fund is one of them. The other residual um, entities came later, like the, like the Film Musicians Secondary Markets Fund, the Sound Recording Special Payments Fund, and there's a few others. They were negotiated and set up by AFM members. So if there were no AFM members, we wouldn't be having this conversation in the first place. Hey, Miss Angela, thank you so much. You have a good day. So does that, Jeannie, does that help to answer? Yeah, so you don't have anything written in your bylaws. You just kind of word of mouth. You just try to encourage the union membership. Um, do we have an MPTF section of our bylaws? That's a very good question. Um, we do have, I mean, in our bylaws, if you if if we're referring to our bylaws, you know, our local bylaws are going to have language regarding union membership and union engagements. So if you're part of our local membership, we don't have time to get into that all the, the bylaws today. But in short, our bylaws do encourage and strongly encourage everyone to be a union member who is a part of a union engagement. Um, but that being said, not everyone is always. Um, there are people who either they're not educated on it, they don't take the time to know. You know, it's a busy, it's it's a very hard life as a musician. And we're so, uh, we're very like forager based <laughs> as a, um, as a business or as a, as a industry. We're kind of taught even in school to like, Keep your head down, do good work, be the best you can, and and don't ask too many questions. Just do what you're supposed to do. Um, and that makes people just look down and just always be foraging for the next gig. But um, residuals and other kinds of um, income that, a passive income that exist, um, just like what the Writers Guild and SAG-AFTRA have neg negotiated, the only way those things can be improved is when musicians come together and make a stand. Uh, so um, that may that might be a good uh, topic for a new seminar, Jeannie, is our local bylaws. So thank you for the idea. Is there anybody else that has any questions I can help with? Well, thank you all so much for joining us today and really appreciate your time. Again, if you have any other questions in the future, you can always reach out to your local uh, AFM here. We're local 148462 in Atlanta. Y'all have a great day. Take care. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Bye. Ciao, everybody.